Welcome. Welcome to Breaking Barriers, Advancing Women's Leadership in Business. We have so much to cover. I want to be really, really fast. And with You want to hear from these extraordinary women. Research has also shown that the most successful corporations have more women in the C-suite, they're women CEOs and more women on boards. In fact, the more they have in those roles, the more profitable those organizations are. And that is substantiated by research. So there is a good reason for companies to want us to succeed and to be moving us up. There are barriers that exist, not only from the companies, but often within ourselves. And that those are the things that we address, we're going to be addressing today. Those are the things we also address in the programs that we do at GW. I think for ambitious women, navigating career growth can be a real challenge. Depending on where they work and who they work with, organizations really have an opportunity to look at their people with fresh eyes. And I think one of the simplest things that a manager can do is sit down and have a conversation with someone. And when I think about the most powerful conversations I had, it may have been over a coffee chat with one of my leaders. They got to know me on a personal level and they got to know me more on a professional level. And they asked me questions that I hadn't really even considered myself. Like, what really motivates you? And I think having those very real conversations enables you to start thinking about what the next generation needs one at a time. But I, I think the uh, investing in people in their career path is a really important conversation because I think it's okay to give people permission to explore what that career path looks like and not have it look like a ladder, but maybe more of a jungle gym. So you're moving around. You can move laterally, you can move up, but really what you want to do is you want to build that skill set base that you have and that 360 understanding of business because the more that you understand business from an operations a HR perspective a legal perspective the better steward you could be of the business and so I think that's really important I think the one thing that we really need to lean into is that the world of work as we once knew it it's being disrupted for everyone not just for Gen Z's or you know baby boomers or Gen Xers like ourselves the world of work is being disrupted. So that is a common ground. And oftentimes when we talk about a generation over the other, the other generation thinks that it's at their exclusion. But right. we need to bring all the folks together to talk about, you know, what are the things that we collectively have in common? What are the business goals and objectives and how can we work together to achieve them if even if how we achieve them looks different. I think a key su to success today is to be flexible. We have so many communication tools at our mm -hmm. disposal. I think it's a matter of optimizing them, That's right? right? And knowing how to communicate with each person on your team and your organization. Just want to make sure we cannot overlook or even forget about the Gen X um, in the workplace. They or we are all influential in our roles. Um, at the at various levels of leadership and i think to your point we all have a real responsibility in how we how we address the next generation and, and honestly speaking we don't really know what the careers of the future are going to be we need to be focusing on the skills that exist and how do we help organizations individuals no matter their generation obtain those skills so that they are competitive for a future that that is not yet here. And I often talk about skills as the currency mm -hmm. within the workplace. You know, I know compensation will always be important and you know, even why people work has changed now. And yeah. so compensation comes into that. But I talk to our teams about what skills are you learning? Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. skills are transferable, fungible, right. regardless of where you go? So I do think that that is a really important piece of what you hone in on. Mm -hmm. And I think people make time for things that are of value to them. And so when we're bringing people together, it needs to be of value um, that they're coming together for that reason. But I also think it can't be kind of a one size fits all model. It can't be all coming together in person. It can't be coming together all the time online. I think you have to meet people where they are in some cases and take them where you want them to go, but give them and empower them to also be a part of creating that camaraderie amongst the team versus you dictating what that camaraderie is going to be. If they have a level of engagement in that, I think they will be better served and they'll be more attentive and making it worth their while.
So Tamala, I think that one of the things that you said is important, right? As a leader, you have to really adapt your leadership style to fit the needs of your team and help them draw inspiration from the way you're meeting. And I always say that your network is your net worth in business. And so when you get together, being intentional about the connections you create. We talked a little bit about the broken rung, you know, which Mm -hmm. McKinsey identified about the fact that women, we fall behind early in our careers because the numbers show that many more men get move into management positions sooner than women do. How do we change that? You have a ceiling, right? And I think most oftentimes men are taller than women. So, right, so they already come in at an advantage because they're closer to the ceiling than we are. So what if we gave, I'm just thinking about this metaphorically, if we gave a woman a stepping stool, it's not taking anything away from the man. We gave the woman a stepping stool to make her on equal footing as the man. It's not taking anything away from him. Let's look at it as how do we help women have the same opportunity to get to the ceiling as men who are genetically predispositioned to be closer to the top. You know, I think about, we we throw out DEIB almost like it's a word, right? Mm-hmm. But it's not. They're all, each of them are different words. And the D and the E, which is what you're talking about here, let's say with the broken rung, can only be impacted by people who have decision-making rights in an organization about who gets Mm -hmm. promoted, who gets hired, what compensation is given. The I and the B is everyone's job, right? Everyone can make somebody feel included and belonged, but we have a responsibility, especially if we're in HR or we're leaders, to be looking at the data and to be holding people accountable when we see that certain in certain classes, whatever they are, web women, mm-hmm. people of color, are not advancing to the same degree as others in the organization. I, I think that starts with management, decision makers, recognizing the life experiences that are mm-hmm. uniquely female mm-hmm. and how those impact the work. And when possible, you have policies that address right. them and have flexibility to change your policies to address them because those things impact their work and their job. Absolutely. What is it that women can do that might allow them to to have their own step stool, so to speak? Um, I mean, I know that in our program, one of the things that we have found is that women often, often underestimate how good they really are and they look to be perfection before they even put their name in for a new position. I think it really starts younger is to have people explore different ideas and purposes and mm-hmm. passions and find that. Don't just go down a road because that's the safe, secure road. This is a journey and you it need is. to be confident to stretch. And I mean, Sonia, you said that to start with, like stretch as much as you can stretch. And you know what, if you're on the journey and you're the lowest person as far as experience on that journey, there's nothing wrong with that. You're still on the journey. And my grandmother said, you teach people how to treat you. And silence becomes consent if you don't say anything. So I think the first thing is to use your voice and your sphere of influence to make a difference and actually to make sure that your needs are known. And obviously the power of the collective is very powerful. So leverage the network of people, not just women, but people around you to make sure that people understand what your desires and passions are. So that would be the first thing I would recommend. But once you are advocating for yourself, be very clear on what it is that your goals are. Mm-hmm. I think one of the things I've found is when a woman like might say like, oh, well, I'm gonna apply for three or four roles. And we're like, okay, well, that's not necessarily the way to go, right? Be really intentional about what your goals are and be thoughtful about what you raise your hand for and what you don't raise your hand because they're they're always it's always sending a signal. I think there are companies that have landed on what their rules of engagement are. And if you are intending to join that company, you should understand what those rules of engagements are and not try to go into the company to change them, right? Mm-hmm. You also have to be very clear about what your rules of engagements are and the things that are non-negotiable for you. And make sure you do your homework in terms of the company, the culture, the the working environment, et cetera, and make sure it's really aligned with where you are as an individual. Don't go accept something and then be resentful because you know how you're gonna get ahead? 
show up and do be an absolute outstanding performer and to have a growth mindset and learn. And then yeah. you show up and you're resentful. That's always going to come out in some way. Right. You can't change. You have to just say, this is for me. This isn't for me. And then go find right. the right environment where you could flourish. Girl. It comes down to trust. Do you, you know, do you, do you trust your team, your um, employees to get the job done, be where they need to be? I, I actually think that proximity, physical proximity in office work gave us a false sense of trust, you know, back mm -hmm. in the day. So we do need to, in some way, rebuild that, if you will, with now all of these virtual um, arrangements. The most successful mentoring relationships that I've had, both being the mentor and the mentee, or was where there was mutual benefit, right? So I was giving just as much as I was getting and vice versa. I think there could be a more informal mentorship that's, it's where you are a studier of somebody that you admire. Yes. And so that doesn't even require anything. So I'm watching these women here and there's other women and there's people everywhere. And I'm like, you know, I really like the way she said it. I like the way she frames that. And so you can internalize that and then study it and almost mentor yourself in a way by mm -hmm. I love that. finding people yeah. that inspire you. Mm -hmm. I love that. I, I would just say my closing thought would be take every opportunity you can to learn and grow. And, you know, whatever that looks like for you, but it, it, there's always an opportunity to increase how you show up or how you show up for people. And that is how you have to be self-reflective in that. I would say um, opportunities never go away, but they go to the people who are ready. So build your skill set and be ready for when the opportunity comes your way. When you're given a seat at the table, make sure that what you're serving is something that people want to eat. <laughs> show your confidence. Uh, you have it, show it and lean in. See if the door is ajar, lean in or even open that door. Take the opportunity when it's in front of you. Wonderful. Well, thank you all for this is wonderful. I mean, we have so happy to bring this conversation to the Compro community. These are the kind of conversations we have at the GW Executive Women's Leadership Program, in addition to the programming that we have, which is all about leadership development and breaking those barriers, internal and external. If it's a program you wanna take, either invest in yourself, but you can also take it to your HR and say, I wanna take this program because men do that all the time. They say, I wanna take this program. It's leadership development. So don't be afraid to speak up. And if you, if hopefully you'll get a yes. And if you don't look at, do I want to invest in myself? Our mission at the center is to make a positive difference in the lives of leaders and the, in the organizations and communities where they serve. And with that, it has been a privilege to nurture and grow our women's leadership programs, recognizing women's extraordinary contributions, but also needs uh, as leaders.